It's Gilligan's Island. <laughs> Is it still a three hour tour? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I got outed the day in 2009 when we went to Ireland on a rugby tour for a week with my team. So if I banged somebody, everybody had to know about it because then I couldn't be gay. Right, um, right, right, right. Yeah. yeah, the only one I think it compared to your sexual depravity is probably Justin's mom, right, Justin? <laughs> yes, just love it. Catholic Irish woman just had numerous children. They call her the cream saver, Colby. They call her the cream saver. <laughs> All right, hello and welcome to the Working Perspective Podcast. I'm Matt Lavelle. He's Jade of Justin Richardson, and our guest today is the one and only Colby Jansen. Honestly, this episode is for the fellas. I'm telling you, this was a blast. This is, dude, this is like guys hanging out in the locker room, talking shop, doing the thing. Like, this guy, he just, he gets it, man. I had so much fun. Justin, what are you thinking? This episode, guys who like guys, you know? Guys who like guys. Yep. Guys, guys. Guys, 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 and guys and girls, and then guys that are girls that are pretending to be guys. Guys, guys, girls, girls are kind of guys, guys, and guys and good girls. Yep. Guys. Yeah. He's a man's man. He is the definition this... of a man's man. Yes, he, he's the skipper. That's for <laughs> sure. He's the skipper. Dude, this episode, honestly, I had so much fun. We went a little over time. So it's a little bit longer, but it was a lot of like really funny stuff. He had a he he's like he's had a crazy career, like going from like a job where he's making over 150k a year to drop out of that to go into the industry. Like he just man, his, his he had a wild ride. Super fun dude, articulate, like really good storyteller. Had a lot of fun, like crazy stories. I mean, I really enjoyed it. Justin, the guy loves banging, and it's just do it. Go for it. Yeah. It's nice. Yeah, he's, he chose life when he it chose came when they asked to him. live out his passions. Yeah. I and like that. Living. He's not living on a prayer. He's living on a passion, and I love it. So, <laughs> well, without speaking of living on a prayer and a passion, this is the Working Perspectives Podcast. I'm Matt Lavelle. He's Jade up Justin Richardson. And our guest today is the bear of them all, the one and only Colby Jansen. Enjoy. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Working Perspectives Podcast. I'm Matt Lavelle. He's J-Dub Justin Richardson. On the show today, we have a beloved daddy who's an award-winning adult star, content creator, and mainstream actor. He oozes sexuality and has been dubbed by fans and studios as the daddy most wanted on screen. He's had a long career in adult, and his worldwide fans love his muscle-bound physique from his playing rugby and lifting weights in his free time. He's worked with top shelf studios such as including Kink, Evil Angel, Groovy, Gender X Films, Devil's Films, Transsexual, Adult Time, Icon Mail, Biphoria, Trans Angels, Why Not Buy, Trans Erotica, Men.com, and many more. Uh, he's won the Top Daddy Performer and Glorious Grizzly, Top Bear Performer from Pornhub, Favorite Bear from Gay VNs. Best Transsexual Sex Scene from the AVNs Awards. Best Gay Sex Scene from the Cyber Socket Awards. Additionally, he's been nominated for numerous awards by Exhibit's Creator, AVN Pornhub, the TEAs, Gay VN, Cyber Socket, and Gravy Awards. He's been interviewed by Instinct Magazine, Manhattan Digest, Quirty Manhunt, and Washington Blade, and for his adult mainstream work, and was featured in Pornhub's 2023 Bisexual Awareness Week. Please welcome to the show the one and only Colby Jansen. Colby, how are you, sir? I am excellent. Thank you for having me on. <laughs> Sorry to embarrass you like that. <laughs> yeah, I, I've actually never quite heard my whole resume drawn out like that before. It's uh, when you when you when you stick around as long as I have, uh, the, the, you know, the, the list gets long, but not distinguished. <laughs> uh, I mean, it sounded pretty distinguished to me, my friend. But uh, hey, you earned it. That's for sure, sir. So 
How are you, man? Thanks for being on. How are things? Uh, things are good. Uh, a little scratchy in the throat. Of, uh, I had like the flu. I had COVID right around AVNs. It was oh. rough. Um, yeah, but I'm good now. I'm better now. Life is good. Very but it cool. is raining here in Las Vegas and I have a hole in my city. So so that happens. Raining in Las Vegas is like a twice a year kind of thing? Uh, surprisingly, it's been a lot of things lately, which is awesome, oh. which is very good because we went through a lot of not rain for a long time. <laughs> oh, nice. So, okay, we have a couple get to know you questions. We call them the disputed questions on this show. Uh, so Justin and I have a difference of opinion of these questions and I'm right, he's wrong. And we're going to ask you these questions to see if you're either right or wrong. So. Okay. Uh, first question: What movie do you think is better, The Godfather Part One or The Godfather Part Two? Uh, Godfather Part One. Wow! 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 Not starting off great, but it's all right. We can always bounce back. <laughs> what about uh, Cheetos? Do you like them crunchy or do you like them puff? Crunchy. There you go. Very good. Way to battle back. Love it. Very nice. Uh, pancakes or waffles? Neither. Very good. Get what away from the cars. Toast? Ooh, My that's man. the guy. That's guy the guy. It. All right. We knew it. We knew we had one of them. Uh, okay. You gotta have that protein. You gotta have that protein in there. Did you ever do? Oh, I, I, did you, what, there's there's a, pancake mix. Well, I guess, but there's this no, guy's name. Good. Yeah, there's this guy's name's Jesse James West. He's a bodybuilder, and he had like put a recipe out for this like protein French toast. I had it. It's pretty good. Pretty good. Well, I mean, but either way, yeah, eggs have protein in them. So, right. Yeah, you know that old chestnut. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, do you game, Colby? Are you a gamer? Um, I do. Um, uh, I actually, my PS five is sitting right there. Um, so I do that. I have my, my grand old, uh, actually it's funny is it's right here. Cause I've been pulling things off this computer for quite a while. This is my old Asus computer that I Ooh. joined Lord of the Rings online when it was in beta. <laughs> and I have five level, well, I stopped playing at level 85, but I have five level 85 characters. One guardian, one <laughs> champion, one uh, rune keeper, and um, one hobbit. Did you do that with Skyrim too? I went back and did a bunch of different ones in Skyrim. When the Elder Scrolls came out, right? I never like I would I the sky no. miss Skyrim. Like it was kind of like there's only so many hours to allocate, you know, in a day to gaming. Yeah. So it's like which is why like first person shooters I don't do because oh. Goldeneye came out after I graduated college and I didn't have time for video games at that time. And uh you wanna watch hilarity? Watch me try to play Call of Duty or Red Dead Redemption <laughs> in versus. Oh, love Red Dead. Oh, that's my, if I had to pick a game, that's my thing. But dude, I'll tell you, Call of Duty, right? Like if you're not the creator of the game, I feel like you're already like 10 steps behind if you went on to play like live. Like I, I just distinctly oh. remember playing it. And for the first like two months of playing it, I woke up and I died and that was it. And that was all I did. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's. Yeah, uh, there was one where it was like these, uh, I think it was PS4, I don't know, it was, it was these mech bot things, and it was kind of that. Titanfall? Yes, yeah. Love that thing it. was, I, that was awesome, that was the only like kind of, fun, but it was time. like kind of a loose first person shooter, because it was very easy to like, Yeah, you had, it was spam. a comedy sort of first person shooter, and you would get enough kills, and then you could call in your mech, and your mech would like drop into the course, and then your mech would pick you up, put you inside of it, and then your mech yeah. would just wreck house. Yeah, that was uh, awesome. That game was so good time. cool. That game nice. was cool. But I, I am a, uh, I have been playing, and I don't want to admit this, but I've been playing Madden since the original Madden, I think it was like in 1986 or 87, yeah. and uh, I'm wrong with vicious. That. I'm vicious. Really? I love going on and beating up children. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Man. Oh, you know what? You can score a touchdown I mean, when your balls drop, you know? Yeah, yeah. Is there, I mean, dude, I remember, I mean, you, you remember this, but when Xbox Live came out initially, right, like with Halo and stuff, bro, the, like, just the amount of stuff being said in that, one minute whatever room between levels like after level between and like when you're yelling at a guy that's near you like that that was like next level i remember seeing that for oh. the first time and being like what am i watching you know like this is insanity Dude, when i was in when i was in college um so uh like when i was in college we i had a house that was 16 or 17 guys that lived in a house of four different apartments and we all wired our computers together and I don't want to admit it was before 2000. So, um, <laughs> and, 
and we used to play Quake Arena. Oh. And yeah, and like we we would play that, and we would play StarCraft. Mm-hmm. And we were T4H. Me and my four housemates, or my three other housemates, were we were T4H. I was Pestilence, the four horse. <laughs> did you? Did you have to? I remember Rogan talks about that. He had to get like a special cable put in at his house, so he had like enough internet. Did Did you guys have to do that too? Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, because that was like that was like when the internet was first starting to go. Like it was ninety seven, ninety eight, ninety nine. Yeah. Yeah. And and we like our college because it's we were in New York State. It like got like a grant for high speed internet, or all the SUNY schools got that. And dude, it was like game changer. Like we wow. went from we went from just playing Sega Hockey '96 or '94 <laughs> rather. No, yeah, that's yeah. the way you make a bleed '94. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. yeah. <laughs> make a I'm gonna make a bleed. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and, swingers. and then also we got we got like four guys in the same house doing the same game playing with people in korea it was yeah. the, that was mind-blowing blue oh, oh yeah dude blew your mind like so it, it when the internet did first come in like the crazy thing was is like you're playing quake you're gonna download a couple songs on napster burn a cd you know what I mean? like that was yeah. a good friday night go, go to, to limeware get some, get some viruses for your computer and see if yeah. your <laughs> your virus protection is up to speed Lime I, re- wire. I remember the first time using a T1 connection to download songs off LimeWire and my jaw dropping. It went from uh, being like a two hour to just download one song, one corn song took two hours. And then all of a sudden yeah. I did it at my buddy's house, got a T1 connection and it took like 38 seconds. And I was like, oh, oh, yeah. oh my God. Yeah. So uh, I, I, I have to constantly I have to constantly adjust my uh my earphone over here because I have this cauliflower ear and it doesn't stand. Hey. So hey, man. I'm not itchy. That, I'm not I'm not like, earn- you know. <laughs> sorry. sorry, we wouldn't care if you were, buddy. But hey, you earned that cauliflower ear, my man. So okay, uh we got one more disputed question I want to ask is when it comes to eating wings, are you drums or are you flat? Blue cheese. Okay. The That's everything. Uh, Everything yeah, just blue cheese, and you yeah. make it as hot as you can make it. Because drums Ooh. flat, no matter. Chicken stays the same. It's just <laughs> bones. And also, <laughs> I I should actually make a video of me eating chicken wings because yo, I put the whole thing in my mouth and pull it out, and it's just bones. Oh man, the right. so, and drums. Well, all flats rip- and drums. Because that's it's easy with flats. It's a it's a drums. Oh, with the drum? No, the no. Drum. The trick is you got to do it. You got to you got to do it the, the skinny side first, and then you ah. kind of put it the side of your mouth. Oh, I have to try that. I'm a drums guy, yeah. so. And you got to get but, Dave's insanity sauce with uh, Frank's Red Hot. You can only get from a pizza shop. Cheese. For some reason, you cannot buy the good blue cheese at the grocery store. No. I I've tried. There they there's a recipe, and it's 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 a it's a very uh, closely held secret that some old Italian woman in Buffalo holds and when yeah. you're not willing to have sex with her for it. So, I mean, someone is, but like are you a big hot sauce guy, Kobe? Uh, hot sauce depends. Like I like Cholula, uh, Frank's Cholula, red hot, of course, oh, of and course. days of sanity sauce. But like when it comes to like the real, real Mexican spices, or like South Asia or African spice, but fuck no. Yeah. I don't know what it is. I can handle chicken wing spice like so hot that my friends are crying. But when it comes to like eating spicy, you know, like Indian food, I could do like a dicks. Yeah. No, oh, that's which high. is like a what it which is really a white people for. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, I dude, I dude. Um if we did an Indian takeout, we'll get like the tiki masala and it's like you need tons of extra rice, tons of extra naan. You know what I mean? Like you just need something. Oh, to- yeah. <laughs> Who, yeah. Yeah, who, who, was it us talking to somebody who was like when you go to an indian restaurant the hottest thing you can order on the menu is for white people and that is mild for indian like yeah the hottest thing 100 yeah is like i dated i, like, I dated a girl years ago who was uh from peru or her mm-hmm. family was from peru she was american but uh and it, she just like they had it made an entire separate meal for me than the rest of the family <laughs> <laughs> And it was still too spicy, bro. <laughs> and it was, yeah, exactly. I was sitting there <laughs> crying and sweating. Yeah, dude, that's my my one buddy. Uh, the Portuguese and like her mother makes me. I don't eat like a ton. Like I'll sit down, I'll, I'll eat. You know, I'll eat a decent amount. Sure. And she's like the type that like keeps putting shit on your plate, and you're like, lady, I I 
if you make me one more bite, I can't get out of here living. Yeah, yeah. Seven, moving, 17 yeah. sniffs and groomers is your limit? Yeah, no, like, like it's an eight-course meal. You're like, wait, what? There's more? And like, oh, you have to eat dessert and cake. And I'm like, oh, that's rude now? And my mom <laughs> have 5,700 calories? <laughs> Uh man yep that's what it was like yep um you know my wife's european that was like for me too but all right let's keep it moving then so i wanted to talk about our guest today the one and only colby jansen so a couple things we want to talk about uh colby is up for nominations at from the trans erotica awards aka the teas or the t's right yeah yeah the t's they call it the t's the t show okay t show love it and then uh, you scored a best non-trans male performer and was acknowledged for your work in the 2023 with Trans Midnight. You've been presented by Pornhub. The tees are on Sunday, March 10th in Avalon in Hollywood, California. At the Avalon in Hollywood, California, right? Yeah, the Avalon is a fun venue. Nice, man. Have you been to the tees before? Yes, I have. Very overpriced drinks, but it's it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> nice and you just did the avns and xbiz too yeah i i didn't do xbiz uh because i was sick with the flu and i mm-hmm. did like a couple days of avn because i had gotten covid <laughs> so it was Dude. it was a rough time for me but i did it i'm sure covid was running wild around everywhere you know what i mean wherever people are there's covid i think but oh yeah. how well, what... everybody calls i'm sorry i didn't mean to over talk you no go 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 oh i was gonna say everybody everybody calls it the uh, post avn they call it the avn flu because <laughs> Everybody, everybody gets sick afterwards because there's just so many people. It's not like yeah. people are just like snogging all the time or anything. But. Yeah, yeah. How how is like how is the AVNs? We were we were we had uh press passes to go to like the uh, XXX uh, exoticas. You know what I mean? Like the you know you know what they are. Like the they're like comic cons for porn. But we had some press yeah. passes to go to them. Wasn't able to make it. Uh, you know, my wife, she was able to make it. So, uh, well, I mean, if you want to talk about it, Justin, we had gotten press passes, which I was like, honestly, I was, it was like a badge of honor for us in a way. Like we had done, we had had, we had, I mean, we had a really big, uh, we had like a, a lot of performers on our show in the, in the past calendar year. And we really did like a good job of promoting them and having them on. And, and like, everyone was like a lot of fun and it was really good. So when we reached out to them to be, to get press passes, they were cool to give us them. And then I told my wife about it and her exact words were, she was like, you're going to go to like, it's like a, you know, a, a big tits and hot bitches convention. Would you like me to go to a hot guys with huge dicks convention? And I was like, isn't that coming home? And she's like, no, it's not. And I was like, all right. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, so put how, it like that. I mean, yeah. I guess not. Yeah. And she's yeah. also like, you know, I mean, yeah, so it is what it is. But hey, there's always next year, huh, guys? Hey. <laughs> that, um, that, that's amusing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then next, uh, and then you also have, well, you have content for on your OnlyFans. So make sure everyone checks that out. Uh, you have a link tree, right? We'll put a, uh, link to your link tree in the description of this episode. Yeah, I think, so. I, I think it's a dot. I think I have a dot. I have oh, a dot, dot card. Link. Yeah, it's a dot yeah. card. Link. Yeah. Nice oh, perfect. Good. But right. yeah, I I have been slacking on doing gay content, which is what most of my fans want me to do. That's what matters. Um, really? It, for no other reason than I'm just getting, uh, you know, I was burnt out, and uh, which is just ridiculous because it's porn, but it it happens, you know, when you've been yeah. doing. <laughs> <laughs> this beard is definitely not this color <laughs> uh, but yeah it's like yeah but gay content is coming nice Lots man. good are you giving receiving or both uh i am versatile and then if i for my only fans that's the only place you're going to see me from in the future bottom yeah i'll still do studio work as a top uh but not not bottoming nice man good for you hey Dude, that's, yeah, I gotta drive. That, you know, I gotta drive the market. You know? Yeah, I mean, but that's honestly like how freeing it. Like you've been in the industry for a while, so with the birth of OnlyFans and really being able to, like, you, you know, you're kind of running your own shop, literally. So like, you know, like, hey, I can do, I can still get studio stuff, doing this and this and this. But for the big stuff, like you're you you have the pulse of what the fans want, and you know that they want, like, they want to, like, they're gonna pay big bucks to see a bottom, like. That's huge that you're you have the ability to make that money yourself. That's wild, right? Yeah. I, well, it's it's crazy because I had my own 
my own site in like 2016, 2017, 2018 when uh, my men.com contract uh, well, it dried up. And so they let me go, started my own site, didn't work, but I made a lot of money out. So it was, I, I was not hurting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then I was at some award show or some shit. And one of the guys that was like, dude, I heard about this thing called OnlyFans. It was like, late 2017 2018 he's like dude you got to get on it it's just like and he showed me how much money he was making i was like you're fucking kidding me right <laughs> so i signed up and i you know like i didn't even leave my house for like two days all i'll do is like stroke my dick putting things in my butt <laughs> like having a great time <laughs> and all of a sudden i just like get these direct deposits every day into my account wow. start 300 dollars, 700 dollars, 1200 dollars two thousand dollars five thousand dollars like i mean that, that exponentially stopped but it, it stayed up for a while but like Ew. i mean but you build a dude like the w- being a, pro- a porn performer like so i started in 2008 yeah and like so i got i got kind of i i used to be a physicist and i worked for uh eastman kodak and uh, I was a contractor to NGA, the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency. Oh and shit! So I Damn. went to HR and I was like, I was like, yeah, I got this girl is like asking me to do like this thing because she said, you know, like, you know, they're like, well, as long as it doesn't come back to the company, and you're fine. Yeah. I'm like, all right, fine. So I do that, and she like the catch was it was like three hundred dollars a scene. I had to shoot with five girls individually she was one of them but she was like the one that they wanted because she was the girl yeah. that i was hooking up with she was a stripper i met in dc okay. and and then they were like well you know 1500 bucks five scenes i had to pay for my own test and they flew me out there whatever like that's that was i was like all right awesome that's money yeah and while i was there the director dude was like he was like yo dude he's like you know you've got a great body you've got a great look you know everything works you do you perform well you're not going to make any money in, uh, you know, in, in porn. And I was like, oh, well, I mean, I wasn't trying to say, like, but hear me out. You're a fucking guy. <laughs> and I was like, uh, I mean, I hooked up with a couple of trans girls, but I'd never actually hooked up with a, a guy guy. Yeah, yeah. And, and he was like, he was like, he's like, I'm not going to lie to you. He's like, I see this shit. This is what I do for a living. I can spot it. He's like, you're going to be a star. And I'm like, I don't know about all that. <laughs> you know, because like, at the time I was still playing rugby and stuff. Like, yeah. and I, like all my friends are hyper macho and shit. I was just so going to ask, like, were you from like a, like a very masculine type of group and background in a way? Oh, totally. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like back to what we're talking about the internet. Like, yeah. and how like I, so I graduated high school. I'm dating myself, but I don't care. Uh, 1996. Is when I graduated high school. Uh-huh. So in like '94, it was still the BBS. My parents had uh, CompuServe, if you remember that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and images would load like yeah, line oh yeah, by line. And yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know a fucking thing about internet history, and <laughs> oh my god! So my dad calls me down. Like it's like you know it's before school or whatever and it's like 6 30 in the morning and you know i'm up because you're gonna be up at six o'clock and my dad's like come here what is this and it's the picture i jerked off to last night which was a falcon studios image of a gay cowboy with his hat on looking back riding on a big old day and, <laughs> and i was like i don't know some friend sent that to me or some shit i don't know <laughs> That's but a virus. Also, I don't know what that is. Yeah, but also, you gotta remember, it was this was nineteen ninety six. Yeah, yeah, ninety four, rather. Dude, dude, um, think about this. Two, in... two years before this, that guy was handcuffed to a fence. The gay guy was handcuffed to a fence and beaten to death. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. that yeah, shit was exactly. still like gay, gay. Yeah, not, but also, you know, yeah. Also, I lived in Buffalo, New York. So, so New yeah. York City very exciting. had they did like, <laughs> and even at that time, they still didn't know what was going on with with yeah. with hiv and aids and my dad sat me down and he's like we're not going to talk to your mom about this he's like Cause she's not gonna she's not gonna take it well he's yeah. like but he's like i love you you're my son he's like you have any questions you like you know just please talk to me tell me what you know and i went oh no i i don't know anything about you know just 
dove super hard in the closet and then uh, you know and then i waited uh till night uh what 2008 to actually touch a penis <laughs> <laughs> so you had the like so you're so what you're saying is like you know you were had the the inkling of being attracted to men and gay and all that stuff back then and you kind of suppressed it with being over really macho and and playing you know like doing all these sports and stuff and thinking like you could get rid of it or did you even have like some did you even have like some gay hookups and stuff in between them that you were keeping under wraps i never hooked up with a guy uh before i started like until like right before i started doing porn because i was like well i can't go on camera and just like yeah you, you, know. you can't find yeah. out that uh, day when you someone's like <laughs> and, uh, hey, you want to do this you're like yeah and you show up yeah, yeah. You're like, hey turns out i hate this <laughs> yeah which actually happens oh, <laughs> quite shit. a fair amount which i enjoy when they hate it um anyway. uh, <laughs> oh, oh the opposite happened to you where like, the guy was like yeah i'll do it and they show up and they're like i don't want to do it and you're like too bad buddy too bad you're uh, gonna hate that you're not gonna like me but, in a minute oh you think, you think you like you think you don't like suck a dick wait to see what's coming next <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's hilarious i'll tell you can i tell you a quick story real quick my uh my little brother's gay right and we we all you know we all lived in the same house we had one family computer you know what i mean and Everyone was fucking jerking off to it, but we had, I had, uh, we had like, we had a bunch of people that would live at my house, dude. And also like, I had like a stepdad and stuff like, you know, I, I was the only one that knew how to clear the history at one point. So oh, I remember cl clearing it one day and I saw some stuff. I was like, Oh my fucking God. But, and then I saw some like, you know, some gay stuff and I went to, my little brother's friend at the time, and Justin knows him, his name's John Bell. I was like, hey, buddy, look, I found this on the computer. Is there anything you want to tell me? You know? Because I didn't think it was my my little brother had a girlfriend at the time. And I was like, I didn't think it was him. I was like, you can tell me, dude. Like, I'm, you're my buddy. I'll, You know, you're my buddy. I, I love you, pal. Like, what do you want to tell me? He's like, uh, th that wasn't me, but... There's someone else you might want to talk to. And I was like, oh, really? All right. <laughs> you know, it was like, so, but either way, like, it would eventually, you know, I it obviously eventually come out and, you know, no one cares. But it's just one of those yeah. things. But uh, when, when you were, you, so then you had, like, this incident of, you know, whacking off to the cowboy, and then your dad sees it, and then did you kind of suppress those feelings until then? 100%. I dove so fucking hard into the closet. Like, yeah. dude. Yeah. Do like, you remember Biloxi Blues? None of you faggots better touch my stuff. Like, I was that guy. <laughs> <laughs> or Francis, nobody's going to touch yeah, your yeah, stuff. Yeah, like, yeah, you, know? yeah. <laughs> you call me psycho. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 but it, it wasn't until I was working um, for Kodak. Okay. And I still remember I worked with this guy. Uh, like his name is Jeff Stevenson, and I have a very high regard for him. Um, he's out. He's married to a man. Um, uh, and I didn't know any of that when I worked uh -huh. with him because we weren't uh -huh. like outside work friends. Yeah. And he pulled me aside the one day, and we're in a skiff, which is a secured area. To when you have a top secret clearance yeah. and he pulls me into like this other room and he's like dude we need to have a talk and i'm like why he's like you say gay and faggot all the time yep. and he's like he's like listen it's offensive to me however i know the reason why you're saying it and you know, i mean you want to talk about being like a big man initially and then just being crushed because yeah. here's a guy i respect I I absolutely look up to. He helped me out in so many business situations working yeah. there, and, and I'm offending him constantly, not even knowing I'm doing it because yeah. I am trying to put out that as long as the furthest the thing most from macho that. motherfucker yeah. going, I couldn't yeah. be gay, yeah. you know. Yeah, it, it's it's fucked with it's it's and then of course you know years later you look back and you're like fuck man I thought I got an apology. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well dude i'll tell and, you and, and also a big thank you it's crazy though that you were able to use that type of vernacular in the workplace back then too as well like like they oh, could yeah. give a shit what you were saying back then at all yeah, i, I, I might have worked at a, a five-sided building in washington dc that i can't talk about <laughs> dude but that i mean like it's honestly though it, it i'll tell you talk about the the balls on that guy like to to confront you and be like listen you're you're not a bad guy 
but you're you don't need to be this guy. You can be yourself, you know. Yeah. Like him to have because I'm sure like you know he's probably he probably had similar feelings like that or because dude you're not wrong like back then. I don't think it was there was like a, a crazy amount of hate as far as like they'd string you up, but they weren't like it wasn't you guys weren't loved like it is now. I'll tell you that. Well, man. yeah, like, also, the gay community like, wasn't loved like it is now. That's for sure. Nobody's yeah. It, it, it is funny. Is like I have um I have this uh this meme and it's straight some you know it's the same like Asian um, anime thing. And it's a guy like this with the butterfly in the middle. And the butterfly is bisexuality. And it says gay, gay people, straight people. And they're like, what is this? <laughs> and it's like constant because, you know, like, you know, I always felt like a fish out of water. And I didn't really, you know, so I always tried because I was worried about losing my spot on the rugby team, which yeah. eventually happened when I got out and, and all that. I didn't come out. I got outed. Um, no. Yeah, dude. Oh, yeah. What? Like, oh, and also, right. like, this is yeah. like what's one thing I wish I could tell young creators because they're not yeah. porn stars. You have to win awards yeah. to be a porn star. Hell uh, fucking yeah, baby. Little, little sass, little sass. <laughs> no, dude, fucking no. That's the truth, though. You're right. Yeah. Because there's a lot of people in your, this is your fucking industry. You've made, you've built this industry and kept it going. And these people are mm -hmm. stepping in. They need to know there's a fucking difference between fucking and sucking on camera and being a fucking porn star. And that's the truth. And, and circling back to what we talked about before about when OnlyFans started. Yeah. You go and you do your scenes, you get your paycheck and then you leave. Yeah. And the studio makes money on that. And Pornhub makes money on that. And yeah, Pornhub changed yeah. the game because, the, the, you know, they get paid on the ads for everything and everything you do, everything yeah. you did, you signed that, you signed that thing you didn't read and yeah. signed away all the rights to everything you did in that video. Yeah. And, and that's all you got. And then Mr. Marcus, if you know who he is, uh, no judgments if you do or don't, um, don't. he was an African-American uh, porn dude, played mm -hmm. apparently like hot second for the dallas cowboys practice squad or some shit okay and became porn star faked his syphilis test back in 2010 or 11 he's google mr marcus and and uh yeah. yeah and all that and uh and it shut down the industry for six months because if you uh if you get exposed to syphilis you have to stop working for six fucking months because oh. i'm not really sure how that works um Boy, it, that, that's the only way they can figure it out, right? So, fortunately for me, and thank you to MindGeek uh, and Men.com, they yeah, I had a guaranteed contract. So they paid me every month during those six months. But the other people, they had to go and scramble and try to go on to, you know, do webcam and do all this oh, other stuff. And man. they, you know, like, they, like I, I had friends that that were like out of you know I kicked out of their apartments, kicked out of their houses, you know they, they lost everything. Oh and because it, you lose your income for six months, I mean COVID fucked everybody. But it, you yeah. know the, that thing that fucked everybody. And now these kids, they go like I see these like you know twenty two year old, twenty three year old. Yeah, hey, you guys are good looking. I get it. Like yeah, bravo. Like no yeah. judgment and and no jealousy, but I'm yeah. like, you guys have no fucking clue how easy you have it now. Like, yeah. and that's the shit that guys like Christian Wild, Austin Wolf, me, like, at, you know, built for these idiots. And then yeah. they want to go be disrespectful, and I'm like, that that's what that's I'm like, a, okay, I, yeah, we don't talk to you anymore. <laughs> well, that's the thing. Like, if they came in with respect and like and like you know recognize like what you guys did to pave the way. That's different. If they wanted to do that, that's fine. But if they're coming in being cocky and like, you know, thinking their shit don't stink. Man, they they don't deserve it. They don't deserve the time. My of grandfather day because... once said, "Everybody." My grandfather once said, "Everybody sits down on the toilet the same." Yeah, and yeah. you know, it, you don't. You like and like I I really love the freedom that these kids get because mm -hmm. also I came into it after having had a career for 10 years yeah. you know i was making one hundred fifty thousand dollars. i didn't end up in porn i chose to do porn. yeah there's a yeah. big fucking difference you it wasn't the end of first, the line huh? for me yeah um, yeah. yeah i mean well, granted i mean obama did kind of cut the defense contracts and i was like all right man you got them gay scenes <laughs> <laughs> damn <laughs> which so... i mean you know i but what do yeah. they 
say necessity is the uh the birth of innovation or, or yeah. yeah 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 uh, justin you had something you wanted to say oh, no i was just not in my head to the same thing like he's saying like they uh it's a lot easier now than it was years ago that's the truth man it's that's crazy the truth. i mean to not like acknowledge that in any way to be like this was not it, not that it wasn't acceptable but it wasn't like well it was know, a pun- dude it was a punchline before right like only like fans yeah well no only fans was a punchline before right and it was almost like uh like a rude mark at times but now like like you'd be like oh this uh you know this girl who was on bravo for this one reality show for a month has an only fans blah 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 like it was like a punchline like that but now, dude, it's like, bro, I mean, if I see a fucking Instagram model, like, shout out, shout out Monet Burdett, a.k.a. Darabella fucking, hey, I'm, I'm, you know, I haven't paid yet, but I will. Uh, <laughs> you got an old yeah, thing? No, it's, oh. it's, uh, it's funny how, uh, with all that, like, I love the freedom that it's given uh, to, like, the trans performers and, and, and honestly, really, like, the like the twinkier smaller gay performers because before they would have to escort to supplement Mm -hmm. their income from just doing porn scenes and it you know yeah i mean i definitely escorted you know that's what i I don't anymore but i did um but also i wasn't a fly by night 200 dollar you know that kind of thing uh but imagine being you know, 130 pound little kid, 19 years old, and you're yeah. going to go and you're going to this 48 year old man's house. And, you know, what do you get? That, like, that's danger. danger. Yeah. You were in danger. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Whatever you, uh, yeah. It's whatever you like. Yeah. It, it's crazy. It, it, it it's, feels like. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, it's, yeah. it's, I, I love that, that that's how now kids can, you're not kids. Well, I mean, I call them kids because they're, you know, they're over 18, but yeah. Uh, but I love how like that new like they they can actually like find themselves a little bit. But also when you're in your own echo cha- echo chamber and everybody tells you you're awesome, yeah, yeah, you yeah. tend to start you believing need, it. Yeah, you need yeah everyone needs to get smacked in the mouth a little bit. But I want to talk about this. So like you said, you were suppressing this the, you know the this gay urges and and kind of like afraid to come out a little bit and being Mr. Ultra Macho, dude. We've talked about on the on, before. You know, on the on the show, there's some rugby teams that are fucking one boot chug away from being a gay orgy. You know what I mean? Like these fucking rugby teams, they do one. They got iron <laughs> stomachs, man. But there's some of them like they are like they're they're close, you know, like. And so when you're saying that these guys are going to th- or they gave you the boot once you got outed. I mean, it just sounds like it's a, that's upsetting to me. You know, it was actually it was funny. Is well, no, it's funny now. It wasn't funny then. Uh, like I got outed the day in two thousand nine when we went to Ireland on a rugby tour for a week with my team. You're playing pro Everybody's rugby. It's kind of being weird. Everybody was being weird. I was like, All right, whatever. Like I don't know. I didn't really like. I was like, mm, I don't know. Maybe I, you know, I don't yeah. know. But uh, so then, like later in the week. Uh, or not later in the week, like after we get back, like a couple weeks later, my buddy bring, uh, invites me to go golfing. And he like, after nine holes, having a few pops, uh, he brings it up and he's like, hey, you know, I know what you do for a living, but you know that everybody else knows and they've been talking shit. Oh. And I'm like, wait a minute, I'm the best fucking player in this fucking team and they're talking <laughs> shit. <laughs> like the other oh. team named me man of the match, not them. Oh, uh, shit. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, it's a, so basically it was intimated to me that I was no longer welcome to be part of that club. And then I ended up playing oh. in Canada in the Canadian team, but I was in an airport, ran into the president of Niagara rugby, Chris Oxen, who's uh, an amazing, wonderful guy. And uh, he was like, Hey, you got a rugby bag. Cause I'm just standing there waiting for my flight from Atlanta back to Buffalo. Cause that's where Mendocom was filming at the time. And he's like, you should, what do you do with rugby? Like, I'm like, oh, well, you know, like, uh, I'm kind of in between teams right now. I don't really want to talk about it. You know? <laughs> I really didn't want to, you know, I was like, ah. And, yeah. uh, and so I ended up going there and they're like, hey, man, we're Canadian. And once I'm there, like, playing for a little bit, the, a bunch of the guys came over and they were like, yo, dude, we're Canadian. We don't give a shit. You do whatever you want to do. It's a free yeah, country, yeah. man. Yeah. And yeah. I was like, wow what a fucking refreshing country. Like how come I have yeah. never lived in Canada? <laughs> yeah. No, like, I want to move here. 
other other, yeah. other than other than this. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. And, and other the than the, and the boobs. So initially, you went to pr- to perform as a male talent in a male female scene, and it was multiple females, right? And then it was multiple you, scenes, single oh, okay. single female. I was oh, the okay. only so, guy, which was awesome. Damn! So you had the bus like five nuts in one day. God, no, no, no. O- over oh. five days, one scene a day. Oh. Uh, two or three scenes a day <laughs> is a task. Yeah, but yeah, that, like my first scene was not with the girl that I was hooking up with. It was with this other chick. Right. I think her name is Nika. Nika Noir is her name. Oh, She's Russian. Okay, and and I'm fucking her, and I'm fucking just. Doing the Giving thing, yeah. and they and something happens or whatever, and they're like, "Cut!" And I'm still going, but she's like, before the cut, she's like, "Ah, ah, ah, ah!" Cut, and I'm still, I'm like, "Oh, you're oh, like, wait, I, I was just giving you my best stuff." Hey, <laughs> well, welcome to <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was man. like, "Okay, all right." You're like, "Okay, all right." Well, yep, this is how yeah, it is yeah, now. Was, that was that was my welcome to porn moment, my first fucking scene, and also Dude. it's it is so difficult, like when you're doing your first scene, yeah. because yeah. It, like okay, so it's like somebody you probably don't know who is attractive, yeah. but yeah. also you want to be awesome for them, yeah. and you want to make them look good, and you want to look good. And then you got a camera guy who smells like cigarettes and coffee, yeah. and he's like holding the camera right next to your face, pointing it down while she's sucking. Dick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. you're like, what have I done with my life? <laughs> <laughs> you're like, I have a master's. Oh shit. <laughs> yeah, I do. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, do uh, I do now. So okay, so. So then what happens is the guy there is like, look, man, you can keep banging these chicks and get $300 a pop and still have to pay for your own airfare and lodging, or you can bang some dudes and make some fucking money. So yeah. you're like, all right, let's make some fucking money. I've been wanting to do, I've been wanting to do this anyway. Right. So, yeah, you know, so then that yeah. led into like a career. Uh, go ahead, Justin. I was going to say the ends justify the means. And like, finally you're like, I think I like this and now I can justify it to myself. Yeah. Yeah. Is oh, that, did you, it, 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 okay, go ahead. I was just going to say, did you need that as a trigger to be like, you know what? I've always wanted, I just needed a reason to do this. Or were you just kind of like, look, I'm fucking done lying to myself. Let's go. I think it was more like, um, I, I'm not an artist, but I am a, performer yeah. uh, i've always wanted to be like a pro wrestler you know oh. i can cut myself a promo because you listen to your whole where'd that come from you know like <laughs> stuff like that you know like i, I yeah. love doing like that you know uh there's a party i always end up like fucking being the dumbass center of attention bombastic loud guy hey, um, you're the life of the I, party yeah no i realize but also i realized like my buddies that were very quiet and good looking were all sitting in the back banging some chick and never told anybody about it until right. later it's like i was like oh well if, if i banged somebody everybody had to know about it because then i couldn't be gay right, um, right 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 yeah but so like performing was very natural to me and, uh, and like honestly like i don't even i just like hot people so yeah. like performing and attractive people like doing fun things on camera like it's I, i've done it so long that i love like i said this to matt before the podcast i was like look say what you will but like dudes do everything better than women two dudes two professionals doing it it's got to be creme de la creme it's oh it's gotta be the best it's gotta be the best I, if, yeah it also like because i also like women so the trans women like they're because when i was in college like i went to college near buffalo it's like cold everything like that you know, girls don't shave above the knee like from November <laughs> to like April, and like they just don't. That's the like, hardest part to get over. They don't put on makeup. They don't try. Yeah, yeah. And every trans girl smells wonderful. She's Ugh. perfectly clean, mm-hmm. and she fucks like the dirtiest porn star you've ever fucked, and it like exudes femininity. And I and that's sort of like where my attraction is. Like I know my, a lot of my fans want me to like just be with super masculine guys but i'm more attracted to like more like feminine or smaller kind of guys or and yeah. or trans girls yeah. and uh so it, so it's always funny to me like when when guys are like oh i would never i would never be with a trans girl i'm like uh you say okay. that now say that, that why now, is it the number, why is it the number five most popular category on straight porn hub <laughs> really 
is trans. Whoa. I was is number one still Asian? Because I know it was Asian before. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I, I just so know. trans I, is I number five on straight. Yeah. Whoa. And also on straight, because gay men don't watch chicks with dicks. Gay men will watch maybe a guy with a pussy. Have you? Yeah, you because know, that's the thing. But yeah. have you tried that? Have you had the uh, post op female trans? I've done the post op, and I've done a, a female to male trans. Um, unfortunately, the scene can never be released because the I will not name the other people in the scene but yeah um we can't release that I've <laughs> uh, the other male performer in the scene is a fucking dick <laughs> <laughs> how was the the female to male uh for lack of a better term rig like was it what do you think of it like realistic oh well, well, you're saying like how was the I mean, new it was a genetic vagina so it was, it was fine yeah no, um, you have the, yeah, the the I don't know how to put this. You're saying the woman that got a dick? Yeah, the woman. That... No, she didn't have a dick. No, oh, she was born female, or he was born female, yeah. and transitioned to male. So she's presenting as male. However, still has a vagina. Oh, yeah. Okay. Like right. like like Buck Angel, for instance, is like one of the most famous once you know but it, uh, you know you know that that's this a niche it's not really my niche but i've done it yeah yeah you know, i'll try anything five times to make sure i hate it right right, 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 right. <laughs> and i've only done that once so and i didn't <laughs> hate it so hey there you go you know that's how i got into sounding. <laughs> what's that <laughs> So that's how I got into sounding because Tangent will talk me into doing anything. Oh, I have oh. questions about that. I have so many questions about that. <laughs> you just said the magic word, my friend. You know how long this son of a bitch has been trying to talk Dude, about that? I bring that it up all the show? time and nobody all knows what I'm time. talking about. All the time. Go Dude. ahead, Justin. Fire. This is your time to shine, baby. Fire away. All right. Step one. All right, so I'll give you my... Quick give up. us an explanation of what it is first, Justin, Reason. for those that don't know. So I got a urinary tract infection. I went to the Planned Parenthood, and they were like, yo, you have a urinary tract infection. I was like, okay, cool. And then I did it again, and then I had to come back again. I was like, yo. And they were like, all right, we're going to put a Q-tip in your urethra to check what kind of venereal disease you have. And everybody fucking freaks out about that. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh at normal people do that was the most pain <laughs> i've scratched my cornea i've had my appendix removed i've broken both the bones of my pinky fingers nothing yeah. was more painful than that woman putting a q-tip inside my urethra it changed the way i think about condoms. Pussy. <coughs> pussy. <laughs> and i have never not had unprotected sex since that day uh and and so my question to you is did you like it the first time you tried it hold on so, so on for those that don't know can someone please explain to the listeners what sounding is? So you it's take putting you, things in your urethra. Okay, your yep. male See? urethra. But what are you if putting this is in your there? Wean, Anything? If this I is your know. wean, it is like I've only had a Q-tip in there. What are you putting in there? Basically, like you have it. Like, no, you don't a use a dart. But 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 basically, it's like this. It goes in there, and then <laughs> yep. does it feel good? At you some don't point? use a dart, though. No. Definitely do not use a dart. It feels okay. Does, does it feel good at some point? Uh, well, okay. So at one point, I had four dominatrixes all holding my balls and my dick, sticking a metal rod up my shaft. I had these four beautiful women <laughs> with huge tits all <laughs> holding my dick, and just I'm like You're not making it better. It, <laughs> it's just a, it's a weird place to get like i mean, I mean trust me trust me the, the depths of sexual it, depravity it, it the, the caverns yeah. and deep places i have gone shall <laughs> never be traveled by many however <laughs> the, uh, the screen pauses you're gonna go hey you're wondering how i got here <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> dude yeah, i mean uh, yeah. shout out to you for being able to have a dick that had four dominator six being able to hold it i mean my max was always two so what are you gonna... but, well, so, okay. also the, the other thing is is like the, the, it's like a super flex though because i'm not a bottom like i'm versed no, like I, I, I like I, I like the term power verse because you know, okay. i fuck hard i like to get fucked hard like i like to i i'll do just about anything don't ever google what i did in germany and um <laughs> you the two people you don't google what they did in germany you, you and it, all man. of the germans <laughs> yeah, yeah don't google what i did in germany 
I might be go- I might be going to Amsterdam. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, Argentina. Like, but but it's also like I have I have these like gay male bottoms, and I'm trying to put my cock in them. They're like, yeah, it hurts. I can't do it. I'm like, how are you a porn performer and you can't take a dick? And if no, you can't take a dick, and you can't get like you can't get fucked. And you can't get a hard on, get the fuck out. Yeah. I mean, this is something that I've wanted to ask any male porn star that we've had on the show. We've had another one. I don't know if I asked him. Uh, uh, Andre Stone. Have you come across Andre Stone? Nah. He's kind of fresh I don't really, in the game. I, I, don't even, I don't even really watch porn. It's, it's, I, I mean, I do, but it's usually well, dude, you're at the, with, with husbands mean, and wives. <laughs> You're like, look, I'm gonna be in marriage record today. No big deal. But uh, no. So, so, but when have you like? Do you have a ritual before performing? So like, you know, like your stuff is ready to go. Uh, well, it depends on what I'm doing. Uh, okay. I like so like if I'm if I'm topping, I just eat a little vitamin V, and I'm generally good to go. Nice. Um, but I always like to. I always like to kind of talk to whoever I'm working with just to kind of go over the general do's and don'ts, but also kind of be a little flirtatious. Um, yeah. And it, it, it like the true measure of a porn star is if you're doing a scene with somebody that you fucking hate and you actually make it look good, like that's, that's a professional, but I hate those days. <laughs> uh, when, when it's, when I'm bottoming, oh my God, it's like, it, it, if I know I'm bottoming tomorrow, I got to like, all right, I can eat. I can do this. I can eat that, and then I gotta pop a bodium before I go to bed. I take a certain kind of shower, eat gummy gummy bears, <laughs> shit like that, <laughs> and, and having another thing of modium because you don't want to overdose yourself on modium. But yeah. modium is your friend. When I was in Toronto, Imodium took out an entire big fucking billboard right on Church Street, which is in the neighborhood, and it said, <laughs> "You've we've got we, we've got your back" or something like that. It was fucking hilarious. <laughs> That's hilarious. OB we got you covered. Yeah. Hey, they OB know they're talking that back man. door. <laughs> and that's, that's marketing hysterical. research, yeah. Yeah, man. So, you know it's funny? Like that honestly, that's why you're like one of the true pros. Like when we had we uh, uh we had Alexis Fox on and she said legit the same thing where she'll go to her scene partner before the shoot and be like, "Look, what do you like? What do you don't like? Kind of get a feel for it." Cuz they're like, "Look, we're trying, you know, we're trying to get everything done here and we're trying to make it all work. No one wants to wait around an hour for someone to flap a, you know, a, a fucking sock back to life. You know what I'm saying? So it's like you want to get this thing going. So, no, that sh- that just shows like your kind of level of professionalism where you're at, where like one, even if you hate someone, you're still ready to go. And two, that mm-hmm. you know, like the the commitment to the craft says a lot about you as a performer. So good on you. Oh, you know, then, like honestly, like like uh, having just worked with like D. Williams and uh, Lauren Phillips. Love her. Talk oh, about love her. talk about amazing performers that are like whatever you need, I will do because we want to get the scene done and we want to make it yep. the best as possible. That's yep. professional, sexy as fuck. Oh, <laughs> like yeah, it, it's, it's so awesome. Good. Like I'm like, yeah. this is my life right now. I have D. Williams fucking pulling on my balls and sucking my dick. This is great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not a not a bad day at the office, babe. <laughs> oh yeah, dude, love D. Williams. She's a smoke. Oh, Big so fan. oh, remember oh, we were kind of talking about the Gilligan's Island thing earlier. Uh, so I, okay, that's what I wanted to bring up then. So uh, I wanted to talk about this. So like we, uh, so like you mentioned, you just did a version of the Gilligan's Island parody. Uh, and you also did Biphoria, but I want so you did a trans. It's Gilligan's. Version. It's Gilligan's Byland. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking <Yeah>. right, it is. <laughs> Was it still right. a three-hour tour. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well. Uh, well. <laughs> I mean, depends on how many cuts we took. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, so you did you did the role as the skipper. So talk to me about this, nice. man. What was like? You know, what was it like, you know, coming up with this and like, how was the, you know, the process of doing it? Like, give me the whole shebang. Cause honestly, I fucking love this. Like, I love this idea. We had, uh, God, Ray Ray was on the show. She's, she's the queen of the gangbang. Shout out Ray Ray. Big oh, I know her. Yeah. I yeah. worked with her. L- love Ray Ray. And she was on the show and she did a, uh, uh, breakfast club, uh, yeah. shoot where like, they remade the Breakfast Club and did like the detention scene. You know what I mean, like the whole net, yeah, the yeah. whole nine. 
So I fucking love that idea. So you're doing Gilligan's Island, which I fucking love even more. So give me the whole shebang, baby. I want to hear it. You know, I've, I've like sit there. I'm like, I don't know what the fuck I was doing. Watch hockey or football or some bullshit. Or it might have been working. I don't fucking know. And I get, a, I get a text message from Jim Powers, who is the director for Biphoria, Gender X, uh, I think Evil Angel, other stuff. And he is, he's like, dude dot 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 i'm like hello <laughs> he's like he's like i i need you for a role what is your availability and he gives me the dates or whatever and i'm like I, I, like according to my schedule i'm open they gotta ask my assistant all that but you're no you're a busy guy that's what it is man yeah. you're just hey oh, yeah. when you're at your level you're busy brother so anyway so i so he's like all right hear me out Gilligan's one text bye like <laughs> text and i'm like oh cool and i'm all thinking like oh who had a beard in gilligan's island like who's gonna what would i be am i gonna be like you know am i gonna be the millionaire or gonna be the professor and i'm just like i know i'm not gonna be gilligan and then he texts me the skipper and i was like oh yeah that checks out <laughs> <laughs> but dude like you're and, but like you you're but people who don't know the show the skipper was kind of like a out of shape guy which you are not you know what I mean? Like he's the, uh, the, skipper, sh- the skipper's a, the skipper's a bear. Like he, he's yeah. boss. He's 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 yeah, pretty yoked. He's just That's a fair. Yeah. You know, he's like Good, a no, fair assessment. guard yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yes, yeah. And uh, but so but okay. so so for if for the thing, I was like, dude, I'm the fuck in. I will clear my sky. I am doing this. <laughs> And he's like, I responded as also, fast as I could on my coconut radio to tell him I'm in. <laughs> and I basically dressed as a suburban dad anyway. So I was like, I was like, well, I got like 15 different blue polos. I already I have the five sailor different pairs of khakis. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we had up, we had up, uh, we had up going there. And he's like, he's like, I'm like, do I really need to shave my beard for this? He's like, absolutely. I was like, all right, fine. I shaved my beard off. And when I shave my beard, I do look like, uh, like a thinner version of Kevin James or a fat baby. So uh, it's like, I'm like a little self-conscious. And then I walk in and Nikki Huntsman is just like, oh my God. <laughs> and I'm like, yes, <laughs> this is going to be a good day. And, it, and it's Michael Del Rey. He's so fun. But before that, we had to, like, I watched a whole shit ton of, uh, of the episodes, which was fantastic. Oh, that because... is hilarious. <laughs> So there, there's research. one. Oh my god, yeah. So I on YouTube they have like a whole archive of, them. and yeah. on YouTube there's also another one of there was they have like a trans episode of Gilligan's Island, kind of like a cross dressing episode because they need to like send somebody over to like the natives on some island or some shit, and they got to dress like a woman because whatever. So Skipper is dressed like a woman. I think it's I forget what it's called. Um, Skipper dresses like a woman. Then the professor's dressed like a woman. Then Thurston uh, Howell. Thurston the Howell the third. Oh <laughs> my like a... god. <laughs> and then Gilligan comes in and he sees them all like either one or all of them like dressed up like that because everybody's there. And they were like, This is never gonna work with these guys, so it's gotta be you. <laughs> <laughs> Which was not the premise for for Trans Island, because it was by bi- Gilligan's violence. The bonus scene is Gilligan's uh G- Gilligan's Trans Island, and uh, it was hilarious. We had a great, funny day filming and uh, filming a shit ton of B roll in Ventura, California, and Oxnard as well. And so it was, it was an amazing day. <laughs> it's an amazing dude, scene, dude. That is so much fun, man. That is awesome. Like, dude, must do like you get to go to work that day, like knowing you're gonna have a great time and. You have all this stuff to look forward to. Like, come on, man. Like, you cannot be mad at that. Like, you know, I mean, just what a shoot, right? And it's like yeah. something legendary to be a part of, you know? Like, oh, yeah. It, 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 that, it's just what I was saying to uh, everybody. I was like, I was like, well, I mean, if this was by Swan Song, I mean, not really saying I'm the Daniel Day Lewis of porn, but I don't really do all that many professional scenes these days. But when I do, I win awards. Yeah. Yeah. That's for day. Hey. Hey, man, you don't have to say it. Everyone else is saying it for you, brother. You know what I mean? That's the truth. Dude, yeah. that's great. Yeah, it was, like, it was ridiculous. But, like, but still, like, but the whole cast, like, everyone had to be all in, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. And and also, the other, the other, uh, the, the way the Trans Island thing came about was, so, D. Williams is 
uh, Millionaire's Wife. Oh, love Mrs. it. Mrs. Howell. Love and people. Dale Savage is Thurston Howell uh, the third. And if you know who Dale Savage is, he's a uh, Dale is like in his early fifties, silver daddy, just like yeah. the, the 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 men in their fifties should not look like he does. Oh, oh they oh, yeah. should, but they don't. <laughs> right, 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 right. And so anyway, so we do our scene and they do their scene. And then and Michael Del Rey is like pretty much in everything. And uh because he's Gilligan. And he's gonna do he's another scene me. with these two trans girls uh that are there. And they were going to shoot on the other side of the studio. And Jim Powers is a stroke of genius listening to me. I was like, why don't you guys just do another Gilligan scene? And he was like, oh, actually, that's a great idea. So then they just <laughs> decided to just add in a trans scene. And then we, uh, they wanted to tie everything up. And then we went back and filled the, the second trans scene on top of that. So it was, it was fucking hilarious. It's so dude, zany. Dude, that's awesome, man. Man, like, but like, dude, I'll tell you. Like there, it, it you know, it, it, there's something to be said, and I've talked about it on this show before, where it's like when you're like revved up and ready to go, and like, dude, you're doing research, you know what I mean? Like getting it, like that's like this is the days like you love your job, you know what I mean? Oh, like, dude, I'd like like the mannerism of of the skipper doing this, <laughs> you know, like you know when he's like <laughs> you know, <laughs> goddamn, get, get, he's slapping him, yeah, and then also when he's like gets excited about stuff that his hands start going like that, like yeah, it, yeah, yeah, uh, dude, I, I was like, I don't know, I, I mean, I'm a thespian, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey. Just Dude, you're sit right back in your hero tail. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys do a parody song too? Was there a song with it? Uh, yeah, I actually have. Uh, I have all three uh, MP3s. On, I can send them to you. Oh, dude, that'd be is great. It, I would love that. Yeah, yeah. oh, no. Because uh, I'll use it. If, if it's cool with you, I can use it for a clip. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, definitely. Like, uh, I'll, I'll just double check with I'll just double check with the director and make sure everything's cool. Three but... hour tour. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> right back in your hero. A three hole or no, whatever. Yeah, you yeah. The I mean? second I hit, like, his first mate was a cuck sucking whore. <laughs> 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 it's so silly. It's, it's, just oh, amazing. that's dude because that, the that whole not... thing is is everybody was so into it because it was just so fun and yeah. it was like that is what i remember about like my early days with men.com every fucking day was fun and you're shooting with all dudes so it's like a blast right you yeah know? it was like it was yeah, like we're just fucking having a good time the best. yeah a bunch yeah. of guys goofing around just fucking and sucking you know what i mean come on <laughs> You know, is that not the no, fucking best? You. Is that not what we're here for? Like, let's go. You know, get some ping pong in and fucking do the thing. But, dude, man, <laughs> that's been awesome. So, all right, Colby, we, I mean, we're coming towards the top of time, man. Dude, I'll tell you, man, we were looking forward to this, bro, but you are just been nothing but a blast. And Justin and I are usually on the same page with this, but we would love to have you back on the show if you'd be willing to come back on sometime. Hell yeah. And uh, I actually have started my own podcast. Oh, uh, wor okay. Working title. It's, it's probably just going to be in the cave with Colby or something like that. Uh, Dude. But well, still on. working have title. Have me on. I'll come on. Dude. But yeah. Yeah. I'd, lo I'd love to have you guys on mine and interview <laughs> you both. Oh, dude, I would love it. Dude, I yeah. would love to be any anytime, man. Dude, that's great. No. And if uh, I'll I'll reach out to you for – or has you have you started recording yet or no? Uh, I have – three interviews recorded so far but i want to get i want to get like a hopper like 15 so yeah. i can have that's like what, a schedule smart. that's what matt does yeah matt's the guy who's in charge of that he's like we got to build some so that you cannot show up every once in a while I'm like thank you well that's the same thing with that's the same thing with porn is when you have your own site you want to have a hopper of, of a lot of stuff yeah, so that sense. in case you get the flu and then covid like i just did you, yeah 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 and you missed all that yeah 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 no, that's the one thing. I mean, yeah, when when I was researching this, when you know we aired our three hundred and twenty fifth episode today, so when I was researching, oh, that's this, awesome. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, we uh, we uh, but when we were researching this, you know, uh, three years ago in twenty nine or it was twenty, it was twenty twenty, we were researching this initially. They said that the number one thing is consistency, and if you were to lose for miss an episode, you were lose up to thirty percent of your audience. So. We we had like a bunch of same thing you're doing. We just banked a bunch of episodes because they're evergreens. You know what I mean? Like so, if it's an interview based episode, you can just do it. You can save them and then 
you know, pop them out whenever. So we have a couple in the can too that we haven't used that. That if you know, if we need to, we will. But no, nah. but do uh, yeah. Hey man, I'd love to do your show and 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 promote it and whatever you need, man. Absolutely, you've just been nothing but a great time. But we are coming towards the top of time. So like we said. Uh, in the description of this episode, we'll have a link to all your links with the dot card. Uh, we'll have some stuff, you know, where you can find uh, Gilligan's Violin. Uh, you can check out the uh, the Tease Awards that are coming up. And you can check out all of Colby's OnlyFans and all his stuff. We'll have links in the description of this episode. Make sure you check it out. Colby, is there anything you want to say to your family and friends before we get out of here? Uh, hopefully my family does not watch this. Uh, <laughs> but shout out Niagara Rugby, Black Horse Rugby. Love you, boys. And uh, follow me on Twitter, Colby Jensen, XXX, because you won't be able to search it on Twitter because they've shadow searched me or whatever they call Dude. it. Dude, Ooh. I did like I was looking you up on Twitter and Instagram and I couldn't find either. I was like, where is this guy? But yeah, yeah, you no, gotta say, you gotta search me on Google, and and I just started my new Instagram because I had so in 2019 I had 200 and, or 148,500 and something followers. Not that I was counting when they deleted sure. my account for sexually suggestive posts. Oh come on! Until they got yeah. until they got me in 2019, yeah. and every time I got about around 50,000. Instagram deletes me. That's so like I just don't want to put that much effort into it. It yeah, sucks because yeah, yeah. it was like a huge monetary. Oh, big time! Screen. Big time! Yeah, they know what they're doing. They know. But hey, yeah, uh, well, now, I, now I'm an old man, so I was like, sports old man pictures. Yeah, <laughs> dude. Well, Twitter, dude. I'll tell you, Twitter. They don't give a shit. They will post anything on Twitter, brother. They do not care. But that's honestly, that's part of the beauty. But no, we'll have links to all that in the description of this episode so if you're having trouble finding colby's links we'll have the twitter we'll have your instagram we'll have everything in the description of this episode so you can just go there hit it and you'll be good to go uh j-dub what do you got before we get the heck out of here i got cut off before but i have so many more sounding questions your urinations and comes afterwards how do they flow and feel Ooh. uh the first time i did it it was like it was uncomfortable the first time i peed <laughs> But now, like it's, the th- the trick is, As you have the- to get you have to get one of the like a, a syringe, not with a needle on it. Mm-hmm. Like so, they have those like lube syringes, but you yeah. can just take a regular syringe because I have a really big peel. Uh, well, now you and, do, yeah. Like I could put my entire like before I ever did sounding, I could put my entire pinky finger to here inside my peel. Well, before you ever even tried it, before you called me a coward. It. I was just trying it with a Q-tip. I could not put my pinky finger in my urethra before the Q-tip. Oh. I mean, yeah, yeah I, I did I did take a lot of a lot of hits to the head in, in rugby and show. So you know that <laughs> expands your urethra. My decision making process is not exactly, you know, kosher. Bro, wow. you know how, like so you know how like sometimes when you make um well, I'll keep it PC when you make like cums and stuff and then afterwards when like, you're you busting fall hot goosh. Yeah. You when, you're, when, you're, when you're doing the hippity dippity. And then you <laughs> You know, if you don't pee right away and you wait like a little bit and then you spray all crazy directions, uh, if yeah, you've uh, if you've sounded and now your urethra is expanded, is it make does it make that not happen or does it make it like even crazier? Ooh, good question. Um, I just pee. I, yeah, I mean, it just comes out right I don't know. Like I, it, it, the thing is, you got to get like I've got graduated like things, but you, also like, gauge like, it, like, an, like if you have somebody like dude, he's like, shooting Gemma ropes, or Tangent you don't worry about or that. Lady Vi, aka the Saint Matrix, like sticking things in your pee hole, you're gonna just like go, okay, I'm I'm in, I'm like in for in for a penny, in for a pound, like you're doing right, the fucking right. thing. No, no, I'm right, just right. asking like the but the... afterwards, like I didn't. I did not even it, really, honestly, I like the most extreme sounding thing I ever did because they were professionals too. Yeah, that's another thing. They he just had some pissed doing. off. Justin had some pissed off fucking lady at Planned Parenthood being like, "This fucking guy's making me grab his yeah. cock." Yeah. <laughs> you know? Well, yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't advise taking a Q-tip every day. <laughs> uh, oh God, I don't want to do. I, I mean, guys, I don't want to stick anything up there. Come on. <laughs> I'm like dying over here just thinking about it, but you know it is what it is. Hey, oh god, do? that's awesome! It's the next frontier. It's like uh, Star Trek. It's so the then, final wait, frontier. When do you, but okay, so is the thing though when you have something in there, don't you flick the the tip of the thing that's in there to make like a vibration? Isn't that what's going yeah, on? Yeah, yeah, they could do that too. Because some of them have like that's why they call it sounding because they have like a okay. tuning fork on some. That's of them, why so they, they call it. wait. 
I never you knew didn't that. Know that you did, you've been obsessed with sounding for two fucking years, and you're just figuring this out. I didn't know and you flicked it to it make it vibrate like a sounding so, rod. I, so let, let me explain. Like, so if this is your, if this is your shaft, this is the sound, yeah, or the the rod rather. Yeah. It goes all the way in and see this part right here. Yeah. <laughs> that hits you in like the bladder area, prostate area. So they were taking it and dropping it. Like like it was in me, but it was super lubed up and everything. So it didn't hurt. It's like oh, you're making that face, hurt. but honest honest God, didn't doesn't hurt. It's okay. terrifying, which also sure. adds to the fucking the like, right, allure. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. And so Tanja's dropping and is hitting me down there, like right in the base of like are you i don't know or you, must be where my pelvis is or are you high or, you or whatever and it was wild yeah, yeah. i wouldn't say awesome i'd say wild hardest chinese algebra right there babe you know? yeah <laughs> you gotta try sounding on this podcast no dude I, if we get a are million doing followers, it, are you I doing it hard? Or are you doing it soft? Podcast right now. Oh, well, you can. St- you're from Boston, huh? No, I just, no, we're just, I, we just, it's fuck just funny to say it like that. Oh. <laughs> we're, from, we're from we're from Philly. Oh, okay. Can Don't you sound hard? Right. Right. Anyway, that's a story for another time. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> like it's no. Uh, I started hard. Sure. Well, actually, no, I didn't start hard. I was in a chastity cage. Then I got hard, and then I got not hard. But I mean, I've done it several times, so it's like you got not hard with it in there. Yeah, I was hard. It was in there, and then my dick kind of like got yeah, I mean, you oh know, down God. because it, I mean, it's scary. But then yeah. the girl sat on my face, and yeah, the other one stuck her another... fingers up my butt, and then You're I doing she came back alive. You, feel, you got things going on, you know. There's a lot of stuff so, happening. You can do so much cool stuff. Like for your I body. said, the caverns of sexual depravity that I have uh, that I have explored. Uh, will I mean are, are, the only one, not for the weak of heart? Yeah, the only one I think it compared to your sexual depravity is probably Justin's mom, right? Justin, <laughs> hmm. yes, I love it. Catholic Irish woman just had numerous children. Oh, Something horrible Irish about Catholic that. Catholic and crazy. They no. call her the cream saver, Colby. Mm-hmm. They call her the cream saver. <laughs> I love it. That's awesome. <laughs> Hey man, just a couple of guys busting on moms here. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, Col- I mean, Kobe does that literally, but you know. <laughs> but uh, either way, okay. Well, speaking of busting on moms, this has been another episode of the Working Perspectives Podcast. I'm Matt Lavelle. He's Jade Up Justin Richardson, and our guest today is the man, the myth, the legend that is the bear of all bears, Colby Jansen. In case you're wondering, you can find all our stuff and all our content on all podcast platforms and YouTube at Work Perspectives Podcast. You can us on Instagram at Work Perspectives Podcast and join us on Twitter and TikTok at Work and Pod. And if you'd like to be a guest on the show, please email us at workperspectives at gmail.com and please like and subscribe to keep bringing you this sweet, sweet content. Thanks for listening and we'll see you next time. Thanks. See you.